All right. Hello and welcome to this session on live streaming editing. I'm Jan Einerly or user Einerly and I have a panel with me today who's hopefully going to do most of the talking and I'll just get us started here. So let's uh, do a brief round of introduction and please tell me like who you are and what your main topic of streaming, like what are your streams about? And let's start with you, Sandra. Ah, yeah. Hi, hi everyone. So my name is Sandra uh, Hobsansak on on Wikipedia or Wikimedia, and uh, I've been streaming. Uh, actually, I haven't been streaming that much this year, but previously I've been streaming mostly um, a few live edit sessions for both Wikipedia and and Wikisource. So we're doing uh, those platforms, uh, but also we've been streaming a few panel talks regarding different topics uh, around um, Wikimedia. Uh, and also we, uh, I'm saying we, because I've been streaming mostly together with a friend of mine. Uh, and uh, we did a live session also from our uh, Wikipedia camp uh, last summer, uh, which was really fun. So that was more of a, I don't know, a, like almost talk show like with both us, uh, me and the other organizers, but also camp members who were very new to Wikipedia. Uh, so that was fun. Um, yes, can I hand over to Rebecca? Yes, of course. Thank you very much. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Rebecca O'Neill and I'm based in Ireland. So I started live streaming during the pandemic, uh, when all in-person events went away very quickly. Um, and I did it for about two years throughout it, much like Sandra, it's kind of dropped off a little bit, as I think not as many people are accessible to stay at home. You know, they don't have lots of time uh, to watch many kind of long form streams. But uh, a lot of mine were quite instructive. They were um, aimed at people who were interested in how editors work. Um, how they're attracted to particular topics, how they go about editing an article, where they find sources. Um, but oftentimes I found it was uh, other editors like Jan or uh, Nicholas or Liam uh, would often keep me company, uh, which was great. And I did one or two, I suppose, very long form streams where it was a bit of a challenge to try and edit as many articles as possible, one of which I did for charity, which was great fun. And my here. So. Sure. Hi, my name is Mahir. I go by user Mahir256 on Wikidata and the Bengali Wiki source. Uh, my streams, which uh, I started last summer, um, sort of in the, uh, because I was able to all allocate some time uh, each week to do so, uh, were had a very specific focus, which is essentially to uh, first to promote the idea of um, editing a specific subfield of Wikidata, which are lexemes, basically items for words, if you will. And more specifically, to use those items for words to try to generate sentences the way that we might expect for something like abstract Wikipedia. The idea being that, you know, we, we have this uh, objective of, you know, trying to generate text using Wikidata items and lexemes. Let's try to make that possible. That's the thing that I was trying to showcase for uh, on my streams. And it has been a, a, about a month or so since I've last streamed, but uh, ordinarily this would be a more regular thing. But yes, that is my main focus with my streams. All right, and just quickly for myself, I've been mostly streaming, uh, editing Wikidata. Me and user Abin Itiotta, Albin Larsson, uh, are a bit over a hundred streams. Uh, so starting to get into some sort of rhythm there, but we have a, a summer vacation right now. You all alluded a little bit to it, but sort of like what got you started in actually going from just editing to press the record and stream button, go live to, to, to get it go out there. And let's take the other way around. Let's start with you, Mahir. Uh, sure. So um, first, I, I, I guess uh, the, the motivation for my starting to stream is an extension of this idea of trying to make something uh, very abstract, or I mean, it, it is abstract Wikipedia after all, but making that a bit more tangible, a bit more concrete as far as what it is we can try to make accomplish. Uh, and um, it, it, it was interesting from, from it, 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 the, the end result, I think, was that these streams not only were productive from the standpoint of me as someone who's trying to program these things to happen, but if I'm targeting a language of uh, someone, the language of someone in the audience, like the native language of someone who's uh, watching the stream, then it's even more 
inspiring for them, I think. And, and that's the sort of contribution that I wanted to encourage, which I don't think just simply editing would do. Um, so I thought like, the actual live demonstration of something as revolutionary as what I was working on, um, uh, I think would have been more impactful um, than just saying, okay, after the fact, this is what, what was done. Yeah. Uh, maybe Rebecca, Rebecca has other ideas as to uh, <laughs> what gets them into streaming. <laughs> Well, it's 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 more about what I'm able to do and, and Wikidata and, and that sort of thing. I am, I suppose, a user light when it comes to things like that. Um, but I suppose initially I was quite structured in the first 12 that I did were very much mirrored what I would do in, in a series of workshops. So I actually archived those 12. I, I downloaded them from Twitch and put them up on the Wikimedia Community Ireland YouTube. So it was very much start here, how you create an account, how you might find um, an, an easy article to find um, a way in, so like a stub. Um, an awful lot of what I, because it mirrored, I suppose, a lot of the work that I do within education, um, I kind of went for Irish topics, so places, um, biographies, historical biographies, but then I would do a historical biography, creating one from scratch, and then do a contemporary person to show how you would approach writing a biography of, of a living person. So it was quite... So it was once I got to the 12, I was like, okay, what now? Um, so at that point, they became a little bit looser. And it was as people, mostly on Twitter, as was, um, requesting, um, how do you go about doing X? How, how, you know, how do you approach this type of article? So I would look to, and I would do very simple things, like if it was Wiki Loves Earth um, or Wiki Loves Monuments, I would show people how to use the, the platform and I would pin, you know, that small amount of the stream. stream. So it was quite functional, I suppose, for me. But then um, when I wasn't archiving them or thinking about, okay, I'm going to put this out as a short form video somewhere, it was just a little bit of a stream of consciousness and, and me just editing. Um, and that was, you know, depending on how many people were watching, uh, could get a little bit kind of silly. Uh, they probably realized that uh, I do an awful lot of dark muttering to myself when I'm editing Wikipedia. Um, and then I would do a little bit of, and this is how you go about finding an image, or I found this image and this brought me to this article, or you know, I was eating a certain food and I realized the article was terrible. So it was a lot more kind of uh, as I move around Wikipedia as an indiv individual rather than the project coordinator of Wikimedia Community Ireland. Sandra. Uh, yeah, so um, I got into streaming through gaming, actually. We, we have referred to that being maybe more, more common uh, of a topic. And then because I, so I started uh, editing on Wikipedia through actually, so I mentioned the Wikipedia camp. Uh, so, uh, um, I, I started by by chance uh, finding uh, a, like a an invitation to like do you want to come you know learn how to edit on Wikipedia uh, and of course I did because I was like I knew that it was possible I just didn't know how uh, and um, so I went to that camp I then from that year on became part of that was the first time the camp was held and it was a camp directed at people who identify as women because of the shortage of uh, people who identify as women editing on Wikipedia. And, uh, and then I became part of organizing that together with uh, one of the organizers from that year. Uh, so a lot of my, um, how I approached Wikipedia, I'm also kind of an editor light, but I, um, I do a lot of reaching out and helping others sort of get over the threshold from never having dared to edit to trying to edit. Uh, and that's part of what I brought with me to streaming, because as uh, you mentioned, Rebecca, I also got into it during the pandemic. Uh, and when the opportunities to be there doing uh, like, uh, oh my goodness, now I lost the word for Skrivstuga in English. Uh, edit a thought. Yeah, edit a thought. Yeah. So I'm based in Sweden. I forgot to mention mm -hmm. that. Um, so uh, so when that opportunity disappeared and and I am registered as like a helper or father in uh, on Swedish uh, Wikipedia, uh, but I noticed like how much more difficult it is to answer certain questions in text 
because people will ask you and and it's just more nuanced than saying do this or do that and and i find that when you have a streaming situation uh even though the other people are asking you things in text you can present an answer that becomes way more nuanced and wider and broader and you can then also explain because one thing i've noticed uh you know going to answer questions in, in different scenarios is that um while it is easy to edit and i do try to mention that what can be difficult are like what the 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 things that are easy are usually the things that people are most afraid of which have to do with the technology like you know just push the button write the things those are the things that people tend to be scared of mm. but what's usually the most difficult is what do like what belongs here how do i solve this so that i'm stay neutral like what are the demands on wikipedia or even wikisource because we have like a huge set of of um agreements on how do we treat these platforms and those are the things that are difficult to to reply to when it comes to someone asking you a question where they sort of jump in and go the first question is like how, how do i create a whole new article for this little youtuber and you go oh, 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 oh wait 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 time out time out let me now direct you to this 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 this, this and, and this and that became so much easier in uh, in uh, a streaming situation so my aims with streaming were the same as as my aims usually when when i'm part of of uh, different uh initiatives uh, uh, other initiatives on having to do with wikipedia is uh, to reach out to those who are just getting started and to help them have a good first uh like starting experience with wikipedia or wikisource or yeah wikidata um so yeah, uh, that's great. Jan, I, I, you, I, how? Did, yeah, I'm happy to you also. Well, it was also during the pandemic, so mm -hmm. it was uh, with the <laughs> Wikipedia Weekly live stream, and then sort of that kicked off something else as well, uh, wanting to do something with Wikidata because I'm, I'm really fascinated by by Wikidata as a as a project. Uh, so. That's where it sort of got got going. Uh, I was also already doing the Swedish uh, Wikipedia podcast, and I was thinking about doing that recorded as a live stream as well. We were using uh, software to to record it uh, remotely already, so like just turning into to that to be public was also a, a small step. I see that we have a, a question in the chat here. I'm going to kind of come back to you, Lucy, because we were all uh on to something all three of you here and that was like with the, what you got you started was also possibly something that was feeling rewarding or something that you achieved do you have any like concrete examples of like during a stream that you felt something or oh here i really uh struck on something that i particularly couldn't have made just on wiki in text uh And feel free, anyone who comes up with uh, the first here. Well, maybe I could just partly reiterate. So both having those kinds of sessions where someone can, can ask you something and you can provide a response that is more nuanced, but also something that we have done that I felt was very rewarding is to, and, and this isn't edit related, it's more to do with the the threshold that i mentioned for people to get into to editing um we did a couple of panels talking about where we had like a friend who was uh, had never edited on wikipedia and we had her uh, be a guest and ask questions that um uh, you know like as a person who has never uh has never edited uh what is it that sort of what would you like to know to be able to get started and uh, uh, and that then could also include the chat and maybe also lessen the it it can help the chat also to start thinking of like what is actually stopping me if i've never edited uh 
what is it that's that's sort of scaring me or that's hindering me so as with all conversations they can lead to um more thoughts than you know just um if you just try to summarize something in text yourself uh trying to get into the mindset of who, who was i what hindered me uh, I, I, I guess I'll... <laughs> no, no. Uh, if you if you don't mind, yeah. I I, I guess uh, if if you're asking about like any specific, you know, tangible um, outputs outcomes from uh, rewards, if if you will, um, I'd say that those are largely dependent on the audience that I have during a particular stream. And uh, obviously, Jan is someone who's been part of the, these audiences, you know, very well. That uh, whenever uh, I'm able to have a nice conversation about various aspects of the language that you speak it, it it's it's promoting i mean first of all it's rewarding to me as far as my understanding of the knowledge go of the language goes and how that could be uh, applied in other ways but also when developing the software that to generate sentences with the like seams there ends up being a lot more progress on the languages of those audience members so if they go back to the repositories uh and, and they see the code that i've tried um to document to the best of my ability they it, it tends to be a lot better for um those languages um, because of the amount of time that's been spent uh, on stream working on. There's obviously going to be improvement outside of them, but I think just the overall development of a particular language's ability to generate sentences um, is a nice indicator of how much uh, of a reward has been got from uh, having very good audience members in that respect. Jump in then. Um, mm -hmm. I suppose I had kind of two different types of rewards. Some of them were personal and some of them were um, related to the job. So with the job, it was slightly more straightforward as people um, would be on, on Twitter or Facebook and they would come across a link to the, the live stream. And, you know, they would have perhaps followed Wikimedia Community Ireland or been aware of us, but perhaps didn't necessarily, uh, they didn't have full confidence of what like a virtual workshop would be like or what I'm like as a facilitator. So I don't know whether the, the streams helped or hindered, but we definitely got some people who then contacted me kind of saying, oh, I saw your stream and obviously I made sense. And they were like, yeah, you could do a workshop with us. So there was a bit of that sort of uh, soft uh, connections that were made. But then in uh, 2020, which is so far ago that I've kind of forgotten, um, I did a whole year of, um, uh, oh, what's it called now? Well, 100 wiki days, but I did three, 366 because it was a leap year. Of course, I chose <laughs> a leap year. Um, so I was writing an article every day on Wikipedia anyway, uh, creating a new one. So um, I found that uh, I mixed up my list an awful lot because it turns out I pick very repetitive subjects if I'm left to my own devices and it probably wouldn't be very exciting for people to watch. Um, but then I started getting kind of uh, suggestions from fellow Wikimedians who'd be like, oh, this exists on Swedish or this exists in French. Would you think about translating it into uh, into English? And I was able to then use my position of privilege. I mean, I'm not an admin or anything like that, but I'm a, I suppose, a, a, tr a trusted um, editor in that when I create an article, I have had a very good track. You know, nothing has ever been deleted on me. It's only ever been merged. So I was able to leverage that. Um, and it also led to me being able to interact with initiatives like um, Black Lives Matters, um, where that was a very new wiki project on English and it was facing not an awful lot of pushback, but an amount of pushback. And I was able to support some of the fellow editors who were writing about international topics, but then create a lot of the Irish topics related to it. And those still persist. So that's probably the the, the best legacy, I would say, from that that first year. All right, then let's get to Lucy's question here. Did you all have followings on socials that you took into to, to your streams? Or, or perhaps I can even expand on it. Like, where are your viewers coming from? Uh, I, 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 this is just a really short answer, which is that uh, I do most of my advertising on Telegram. So there are Telegram groups for Wikidata and specifically for lexicographical data and abstract Wikipedia. That's where most of my viewership comes from. Um, I do not typically advertise this on my regular profiles. Um, it's usually just through Telegram. Uh, for me, and uh, it was, uh, yeah, we, we 
since both me and my friend, uh, we have like started through gaming, then yes, we did advertise. And since also uh, most of what we do was directed at very new people, hopefully people, or, well, not hopefully, but mainly people who haven't edited at all, uh, then yes, trying to reach people uh, meant using other, other channels as well. Um, yeah, it was definitely the same. Um, Twitter as as it was um, slightly more amenable to that sort of stuff, you know, three <laughs> years ago. Um, I didn't use Facebook quite as much because, you know, the, the, the audience on Facebook is, is generally, you know, your family and very close friends and they're not necessarily going to become dyed in the wool Wikipedians. If they haven't done it by now, after a decade of me being an active Wikipedian, it's probably not going to happen at this point. But um, I would also, I, I didn't um, do much gaming streaming, but that would be a huge portion of my Venn diagram of contacts on um, on Twitter in particular. Uh, so, and I would know quite a number of people involved in say local um, sci-fi conventions. So I was able to kind of, there were people who were already immersed, you know, watching out for interesting or different uh, Twitch streams that were coming up um, to fill in their lunchtime. So I know an awful lot of like People, acquaintances more than close friends uh, started watching on their lunch break because I would often do it at one o'clock Irish time um, and it meant that they would just you know a lot of people would be like I have you on my phone you know you're on my kitchen counter while I'm um, so there was a little bit of just kind of I suppose me being um, I won't say background noise but I suppose being a, an accompaniment to as they kind of tried to mix up and, and make their days a little, a little less lonely in the depths of the, the lockdowns And, and similar for me, I did not have a lot of socials. So it's mostly from from the Wikimedia channels that my my viewers comes from, like different kinds. Uh, I see your uh, follow up question, Michelle, but I'm just first going to go to the Lucy's second question here because I think that sort of comes to the to the the, the core of this. What is the benefit of doing live streaming rather than recording something and then uploading it? uh why 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 are you doing live streaming instead of that uh and i think we can have different reasons for doing that so it would be very interesting to say see, see if we are all aligned or not i'm like i could jump on this yes do let's it. go uh yeah yeah so for me um it's it's mostly to do with both the connection like being able to at any point in time swerve in the subject to what is actually asked instead of uh, like if you want to do a video you have to plan it and then it becomes what what you've sort of figured sort of figure out in your head is is needed like this is a structure this is what i'm going to talk about uh, and this is how i will uh sort of this is what i expect people will ask but when you do a live editing uh, you can very much go with the flow of like who's here right now, what do they want to know, and uh, and it's so it, it really is two completely different things in my mind, and uh, and I like the the communication, the conversation, the the knowing that if someone asks a question and I respond to that, I've actually been helpful. <laughs> so um, so yeah, it's different. <laughs> But I have here. to say also, I love when people do videos and upload videos when you're looking for a response or reply to something and someone's made like a minute and a half long video where you can go in, just get the <laughs> answer. That's brilliant. Love the people who do that. Mm -hmm. Will I jump in? Will I sure. say? Yes. For me, it was to to show how messy it can be as an individual editor. Because I think the problem that we suffer from sometimes with very streamlined videos is you're like, you find an article and you follow these steps and look, hey presto at the end, look at this immaculate, beautiful, expanded article or whatever it is that you've done. Whereas um, one that sticks out in my mind was an, an article about a, an Irish guy uh, called Eric Cross, brackets writer, because um, there's a number of Eric Crosses in the world. and um, I thought he was a straightforward Irish writer. I thought, you know, this will take me 20 minutes, half an hour. I have a, an entry from the Dictionary of Irish Biography. This is fine. It turns out the man was a polymath and did 
all sorts of different things. And it was the one where I got, there was a, a couple of people from open, the OpenStreetMap community in Ireland watching it and they were just laughing at me because I kept going, what? Another? How is he doing another thing? <laughs> he like, he, he did, it was during the war, like he started making shoes. No, he started making knitting needles out of spokes from bicycle wheels. And I was like, I can't cope with this man. <laughs> <laughs> and it just showed you that, I suppose, that even yeah. editors who are, you know, creating an article a day or have, you know, several hundred articles in English language Wikipedia can still get stumped or confounded um, mm -hmm. or think that you have, oh, I have this fantastic citation. And then you realize, oh, actually, this this isn't telling me what I wanted to tell me and I need to go out and find more. So and I think those are the most enjoyable streams for people kind of, you know, for people actually just watching as we say in English, right. like how the sausage is made, um, mm -hmm. that it's not this beautiful kind of smooth workflow all of the time. No, I, I, I have to agree with uh, what you said about uh, just the messiness of it all. And, and, and I think honestly, the, the decision making process in, in, in my case, that for in terms of how to model a specific phenomenon uh, in, in terms of like lexicographic information, um, because a lot of this is largely unexplored in terms of how do we model uh, like seems to generate sentences and very often you know um I, I don't wouldn't call it vacillation but there'd often be times where i would um openly debate to, to myself and i guess to the audience uh whether i should do one things one way or the other um and um you know that that sort of messiness is obviously something that i think more people a lot of people can relate to as those who edit wikidata for themselves um and given the uh lack of precedent for modeling certain things, um, which is on its own, uh, in, in some ways, a good thing, because, you know, if everything was set in stone as a uh, pre-made video might indicate to someone, then that ends up restricting, you know, the possibilities that can be uh, that can be you know, introduced and, and exploited for later on. And that's not something and um, that increased possibility is something that we want to promote. And I think the uh, open format of a live stream um, is is good for that in a way that a recording does not isn't necessarily. Yeah. I, I feel so much uh, empathy with you all and uh, relate to, to everything what you say because I done all all of those things and feel, felt all of those things, uh, especially the messiness. Anyone who's seen uh, us edit Wikidata know that like modeling is hard. And having a few people discuss it, meanwhile you're doing it, is super helpful. Even if, like, even if there's no one in chat, just being with my co-host Albin, talking about how do you think we should do this and and search, uh, it's so so uh, beneficial. Uh, I would often and, stress, you know, this yeah. is how I do it. You know, this is this is my methodology. Mm -hmm. Other editors might have, you know, experience may vary. Which yeah. I think is rather important. And this is a little bit harder on Wikidata because we try to get to some sort of like common data model. So it's also a lot of researching, like how have other people been doing this before? Because that helps in querying afterwards if everyone, everyone did it the same. But sometimes mm -hmm. you're the first in a field because Wikidata, even if it's 11 years old, is still very young in, in what types of content we have in there. Mm -hmm. there there's also something I, I think sometimes there's i'll go live because i don't have time to make a streamlined video like the the old quote like sorry i wrote this long letter because i didn't have time to write a short one uh, <laughs> uh, you go out and you stream for half an hour something that perhaps would be a, a three minute slick video but mm. coming up with the actual uh, manuscript for that and then edit it would take even longer time. So, mm -hmm. so that's yes. one of the reasons. Yeah. The, 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 uh, sorry. No, no, the, the, no. There was a, that was, you raised a point that I wanted to make, but I had, but uh, I failed to make. Actually, it's sort of meta here is that there's obviously a lot of things that I would want to make a point of bringing up in the middle of the stream, but I would never think to do it in a planned fashion. Like that's not something that I would think of if I was just writing out uh, a script and and recording it. Um, but those come up organically and they may lead to like a few minutes of, of a tangent afterwards but they were important enough to have come up in the first place so you know, um and, and that and the live streaming format definitely promotes that uh, mm. agree 100 yeah. percent 
the the live streaming doesn't require that very tight structure uh like you know and, and like you said also the cutting the editing that it's i think that sometimes people might not be aware how much work goes into to doing that sort of very tight video uh but uh yeah i was also i was thinking about something that rebecca said and now i forgot it uh oh yeah yeah but yes because you started the whole uh stream of consciousness thingy and also the messiness uh and and that's also something that i think is very helpful um when when trying to reach new people because something i realize is often when people want to get started they tend to think that um the only thing that sort of exists is to create new articles so they come in and they go like i want to create a new article about this person how do i do that uh, and then it's very helpful to be able to direct someone towards watching someone create a new article in you know live not taking out the messy bits because that makes it so much more easy to explain why this might not be the best way to get started because you will face so many different things try instead like looking into uh different parts of what you do on wikipedia and try doing those a few times and i think that's so much easier when you direct someone towards uh actually following someone very experienced uh, creating a new article that makes it so much easier to to like explain why i'm not trying to put you down i'm not trying to say that this is very difficult and that you won't be able to do it i'm just saying it might be easier to break it down into little pieces and start like how do I add sources? What kinds of sources are good? Like just seeing, because that can be messy enough. Just trying to find sources to cover what you sort of go, okay, I know this about this person. Yeah, that doesn't matter. You Like, how do I find a proper source for it? And how mm -hmm. do I then add it? And, and you know, so, so that becomes very helpful also, seeing mm -hmm. the messiness to be able to explain why my there be better ways of starting up for someone new um, and also to help explain like you're not you're not bad at editing if it took you like i don't know 20 hours to create your first full uh article from scratch that didn't exist and now it exists that is not bad if you're very new to wikipedia that's good very true and we, we are also almost touching here on the question from michelle because she was asking can you elaborate a bit on how you go about preparation outreach and follow-up and we sort of touched that with like we i don't write full scripts for my things uh but i have a general idea of wanna, what i want to convey in my stream uh and uh, how do you do it mm -hmm. Um, so for, for, for what, the streams that I do, um, they're typically divided into two parts. The first uh, for a two hour stream or, or so, the first half being actually editing Wikidata and showing the inter editing interface. And then the second half is um, actually writing code and going back to Wikidata if need be to adjust things so that the code works better. Um, for this first part of you know editing Wikidata, um, there's probably gonna be something interesting that I see someplace. There's uh, yeah, no, no formal planning. I, I, there was one stream where I just, noticed that the foreign word of the day on the English dictionary was a term used in Norwegian for a tracksuit used when grilling. And I thought that was a hilarious term. So I thought, let's try to use that term uh, in the stream. I did nothing else with that except to say, okay, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna make this happen. And so the first half of the stream that week was, yes, let's, let's see if we can make this happen in some other language uh, in other languages in general, like uh, other words for tracksuits. Um, and then the rest of the stream sort of followed from there, uh, as far as, um, you know, trying to get people engaged, like, oh, you speak this language, let's try to make this same term happen in this language in the most meaningful way possible. Um, if something doesn't end up finishing within the two hour time span, then I try to ensure that, you know, at the end, especially if, if I get stuck in the middle of some code block, then I go back, uh, to the same channels in which I've advertised and, uh, post like, okay, this is after some amount of effort, here's what we got. Um, and this happened with a few languages, but not the one that I, I was doing on stream. So uh, yeah, it's, I'd say that uh, <laughs> most of the stream, that uh, most of my stream is done essentially winging it, if you will. Um, yeah, I am very much another winging it person. 
um, seat, seat of the pants fashion. Um, what I would sometimes do is if I was really stumped, um, and, and especially in, you know, kind of towards the end of when I was kind of doing intensive streaming, it was at least twice, three times a week. Um, I started to run out of my own kind of comfort zones. And I was like, hey, you know, what would you like me to, to see me editing? And I would get some interesting examples. So food or customs uh, from different countries as related to Ireland or something like that. Um, or then I'd look to, as I would do with social media for the, the affiliate here in Ireland is, is there an anniversary today? Is it a particular, is it somebody's birthday? Is it um, a particular historical day? Is it international, you know, um, a black cat appreciation day or, or whatever, uh, whatever silly day is floating around? Or I'd see what was trending on that particular day and see if there was something that I, interesting that I could um, fold into it. But generally the amount of preparation that I had was kind of minimal. I would try and find a few kind of jumping off source material you know, so online resources that I could just very easily clip the screen and say, this is where I'm taking my information from. Um, and mine were kind of slightly more short form. So I would go for, sometimes it would just be 20 minutes. Sometimes it would go up to 50 minutes an hour. Um, it would depend on kind of how the rest of the day was 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 panning out for me. Um, so I gave myself that flexibility in it. And people then, I would get different audiences based on how intensive it was. And also then you get kind of people coming on and dropping off and and kind of different peaks and troughs. So it was, it, I think it, in some ways being a slightly more unpredictable probably meant that it wasn't an appointment for people, even if it was a particular day each week. But it meant that they were like, oh, you know, Rebecca might be doing something. So let's hop on type um, type engagement. Um, yeah, uh, for me, it's also like part of what is very um what attracts me to the streaming is that you can keep it very, very much more spontaneous. And so mostly we would just sort of outline what is the topic of the day. Uh, so me and Sophie that I'm streaming with. Um, and, uh, and we would maybe plan a bit in advance sort of talking about what is it we would like to do? What do we feel would be fun or helpful or useful? Uh, but usually uh, we were also trying to keep the preparations down again, being targeting, trying to target, uh, reaching out to people who are very new. We actually wanted it to be as truthful as possible. Like what do you actually, if you just want to start from scratch to not do a lot of work beforehand and then again, present this sort of uh, polished image of what it actually is like. So, so we would keep it at, at, fairly like minimal level of preparations and then do most of like what do you face uh, when you do this do that live it's like oh no and now I need to find this page where did I leave that oh wait a minute I know something about that okay let's look for that uh that was also part of the, that's also part of the fun I think to to and and it is instructional for people to to see that uh so yeah it's it's not the chef's like oh but I've already done that here we go. Uh... That has happened to to me sometimes because sometimes I'm do very hard queries and I make sure that I actually know how to do them before so I have a copy <laughs> on a second screen so I can check and sometimes I copy over it everything because I live I mess it up and I don't I can't find where I mess it up so mm -hmm. that has happened a few times. We're nearing the end here, so I just want to do a quick round here for anyone who's been watching us now and thinking, hey, maybe I should be streaming. Do you have any like f small tip or uh, encouraging words that you want to send with them that they, they can uh, think about like uh, to, to get started or something? Yes. Um, something I would say is... Uh like make sure to, to make your threshold as low as possible like i when i started streaming i went for like what is the minimum viable product here like what do i actually need to get started because i think that a lot of people will uh, stop themselves in trying to go like oh well people streaming they have all these cool things and this is happening and this is, it's like but you don't need to start with that just just do the basics like you don't even need a starting screen <laughs> like just have an ending screen just make sure you have one screen and 
that you can and like you don't need the best camera or the best sound like mic or whatever just what do you actually need to get started if this is something that you would like to actually try because yeah. otherwise you might get stuck in the preparations and never get started mm -hmm. rebecca hard agree that's it you can get kind of you know i don't have a a ring lamp or you know i haven't set up a, an extra mobile phone so it's a it's a nice stream of myself i i liked yeah. being slightly fussy and out of focus at times um i did the one thing i invested in was a good microphone and i think for people who listen to podcasts and things like that they they do appreciate that but i wouldn't say that you need that straight away i'd say get into the comfort zone and then think about whether or not you want to invest in something like that yeah i, I, I fully agree regarding you know uh it super expensive equipment isn't necessary to start off and you know you should definitely be flexible with uh uh what you would consider to be a productive session uh for sure um and i also say that you know um don't be don't be afraid to get uh of audience suggestions uh whatever they may be um you know your audience is going to be uh your best um your best friend for the most part for the duration of the stream and so um you know if you are able to tailor your your um output to that audience, then, you know, all, all the better for you. Great. And I think our time is up there. So thank you, Sandra, Rebecca, Mahir, for joining this stream. And thank you for all, everyone in the audience asking questions as well, keeping this live, live streaming. So that's uh, <laughs> meta, 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 almost here. So, all right. Uh, thank you, See you next Jan. week, Aminia. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Jan. <laughs> Oh, thanks. <laughs>